What's going on guys? Jeff back with another video. Well, today we're going to talk about a project I just completed. It was, needless to say, interesting. The restoration of my 1977 Super Joe Commander. For those of you, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with Super Joe, it was made one year in 1977 by Hasbro. If you blinked, you missed it. Um, it was a direct transition from the Adventure Team line as they shrank it down to this 8-inch line to compete with the Mego, World's Greatest Superheroes figures, as well as some of the other uh, superhero-oriented type figures of that era, Star Wars also, space, and whatnot. Um, Super Joe is a pretty controversial figure. I think most of you guys out there are familiar with it. Some of you might even have had it as a kid. I did not. Um, as I've done more research on Super Joe, I'll tell you what I think about it briefly. I think it was ahead of its time. I sometimes look at the concepts and it seems pretty cool and I often wonder had Hasbro launched this figure as a three and three quarter inch figure at the time to compete with Star Wars, the Mego Pocket Superheroes, Mego, um, Buck Rogers. I often wonder if they would have done that had it if it would have been a lot more successful. But, you know, who knows? I still think it's a cool line, and I, I actually, like I said, I think it's ahead of its time, and I think it still has its place in the G.I. Joe uh, continuum. And hopefully Hasbro can figure out a way to reintroduce this figure back into uh, action figure form. But we're not here to talk about the history of Super Joe. We're here to basically talk about the restoration of this figure. This was the most difficult restoration I've ever done. Anything that could go wrong went wrong with this. And I, will, I won't elaborate any further, you'll just have to watch the video and you'll know what I'm talking about. But I completed it, here he is. And it was, it was something. It was something. I don't think I'll ever do it again. Uh, I'll let you guys judge for yourselves and see what you think. So, without further ado, let's go back to the shop and you can see how I restored this 1977 Super Joe figure. Alright guys, so here he is. This is my 1977 Super Joe Commander. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Super Joe line, it was the follow-up to the G.I. Joe Adventure Team, which was a casualty of the high oil prices or the oil embargo wars by OPEC in the 1970s. It drove up the cost of the petroleum used for plastics. Thus, the sacrificial lamb was the 1-6 scale figure at the time. And the most popular figure was G.I. Joe. So Hasbro followed it up with this Super Joe line, which is only 8 inches tall. It was a direct competitor to the super popular Mego line of world's greatest superheroes. It only lasted one year. It didn't do very well. Um, it faded like the blink of an eye, you know. If you, if you blinked, you missed it. I didn't really know too much about it until several years ago when I had a G.I. Joe field manual when I was out looking for G.I. Joes and antique malls. There's a small chapter in it on the Super Joes and I've familiarized myself more with it here in the recent years with the emergence of the 12-inch Lucopor Benica's line of Super Joe jumpsuits. Um, I never really planned on getting one of these until I actually got one. Uh, looked forward to restoring one, so uh, here it is. Um, a few things about this before we start. Uh, you'll notice up in the corner there is a Gabriel Tonto. I had some old spare parts from an antique mall purchase. I decided to uh, cannibalize the hands and use them for this figure. A lot of people like to use the Mego hands or the real Ghostbusters hands that Mattel did, which are similar to the Mego style. I didn't really want to pay money for those, so I had this figure and coincidentally it worked out. Um, this figure actually shares a lot of similarities with the muscle body in a lot of ways. Um, both were made of extremely 
substandard plastic joints in the elbows and legs and knees. Um, the muscle body namely had similar plastic in its elbows, shoulders, and neck joints to this figure here. I'm sure Hasbro, you sourced the same plastic. The, the issues with that plastic was it was inferior and in the fact that it degraded uh, rapidly over time, uh, I'm sure due to UV exposure and hot and cold exposure and a myriad of other things, but it was a pretty inferior plastic, which is uh, pretty normal with a lot of things made in that time period of the embargo because they were looking for ways to cut costs. So I think Hasbro probably one of the unintended consequences with uh, with doing that is they created a pretty substandard product and you'll see a lot of these with complete deterioration of the joints the hands deteriorated so there's really no good hands left in a lot of these figures but anyways I have the figure here I'm gonna handle him very similar to how I handle a muscle body uh, you know it's real they're real similar in nature uh, they're hollow plastic parts and uh, they're able to be they're able to be taken apart so that's what, how I'm going to do with him. I'm going to disassemble him. So we'll put him off to the side. The laser chest emitter, or whatever the hell it's called, this thing's toast. Um, it was super oxidized when I bought this figure. I've taken it apart. I might, I'm just going to try to get a new LED light and get it to work just with the light. As far as the jack for all the um, tools that go with Super Joe. I don't even think this thing's going to work. I'll try to get it up and run it again, but if, even if it doesn't, I'm just going to try to make it so the light pack works. Like I said, Tonto is going to supply the hands. I still have the outfit and the boots, so I'll soak the outfit in some uh, detergent, clean it up, and clean the boots up. Now, the cool part about this figure is I actually found a place on Shapeways that makes it's called 3D Toy Repair that makes replacement joints for the Super Joe. So you saw there it's 3D port, Toy Repair on Shapeways. I'll put a link to his page in the description. But I have all the different joints for the, uh, there's the hip. Those there were the, uh, the shoulders so I can act, activate the one-two punch. I have the uh, knee joints, elbow joints, and then neck post. So I'm going to take this guy apart first using my handy dandy tools that I use on the muscle bodies. Get him apart and then slowly work my way up and replace all the joints on this guy and put him back together. I'll also do the hands, which I'll show you later on in this video, how I'm going to do those. So this is the plan. We're going to try to get this guy going. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. So um, I'm sure there's going to be some screw-ups. There might be some damage. Probably nothing I can't fix. And I know from the previous muscle body videos I've done, there's always that one guy who comments that you shouldn't have done this or you shouldn't have done that. Uh, trust me, I understand. It's called trial by error for a reason. And uh, for those of you guys who would have done it differently, you can create a YouTube account and make your own video, and I will definitely watch it and learn from it. So that being said, we'll pause the video, we'll come back, and we'll uh, talk about disassembling this figure. Okay, guys, welcome back. So the first thing is disassembling this guy, and it's very similar to how I would disassemble a muscle body. Uh, this figure is definitely similar to the muscle body in a lot of different ways namely take the thigh for example it's two parts and if you take a really nice sharp brand new exacto knife and cut very carefully across the glue line score it and then you can take this handy dandy cobalt tool that I've used in several of my videos you can get up in here Sorry, this is one I have done already. Sorry. You can get up in here and just work it through that joint until you pop this loose, just like you would do the muscle body figures. You have to be very careful not to veer off and scar the plastic. 
and that's a problem. And I've done that in the past, and I've been called out for it. So all you armchair repair guys who watch my videos and want to critique me, just let you know that I'm definitely not perfect. But you definitely got to do it, pretend like you're a surgeon and be very patient and be very careful on these lines. And the nice thing about this G.I. Joe Super Joe body is the glue lines are very distinct. You almost have a ridge you can follow with the blade. So that's how I'm going to do the legs. And I'm going to do the same thing for the arms. Now here I've actually screwed up an arm. And I did exactly what I told you not to do. I veered off and scarred the plastic. So it was me screwing around, not being patient. So this arm's fine, though. I can get, it, I can fix it and glue it back together, and it's going to be just fine. But it's not going to look great. But it'll be hidden by the jumpsuit. So that's what my next process or my next step is going to be: is to take this figure and uh, and disassemble him completely. Welcome back, guys. Well, real quick, as you can see. Uh, I've done the legs and separated those. Really easy to do, went well. But, however, as I started working on the groin area, I slipped and cut the ever-living shit out of my finger. It's, it was, looks like a murder scene down here. I bled all over everywhere. So, be careful. Finally got the bleeding to stop and uh, bandaged it up. Probably need stitches, but I got the bleeding to stop and took some Gorilla Super Glue and glued it shut. So hopefully uh, it doesn't get infected and it just heals up, which is kind of a Debbie Downer because now I'm not going to be able to work out for a couple weeks because it's in a really bad spot. It's basically on my knuckle right here on this hand. So, Anyways, we'll pause it. I'll continue to work on this when I can. Be careful out there. Welcome back, guys. So here he is, all disassembled. This was actually a real pain in the butt to do. Uh, I didn't think it would be this difficult, but it was. Namely, the waist part, which is what I ended up cutting my finger on doing that. I had to go back and rethink how I wanted to do it. I actually approached it from a more logical standpoint. And uh, I got it all disassembled. So, minimal damage. Uh, the legs, I didn't go ahead and do them all the way because of this joint here. I thought it would cause a lot of tension through here and I'd snap it. So I'm just going to remove it enough to get the new knee parts in. The one-two punch mechanisms were actually intact, but I bought brand new ones. So I'm going to use those instead of the old ones. And I also managed to break off the neck post, which is common, I think. And that's why I bought this neck post adapter from the same manufacturer of the joints. So we're going to start by doing the legs and working our way up. I've also got the suit soaking in some Tide Free and Clear. So, and I got the handle, I'm sorry, the hands for Tonto taken apart. So I'll do the hands. At, a later date so we'll come back with uh, the legs we'll talk about them what's up guys well I start on the legs and as always the case with me and projects I do things never go according to plan at least first time around it's my curse and that's what I live with but that's okay because uh, Onward and upward, man. Just keep pushing forward. Here's the thumb. It's uh, slowly healing. It went all the way down to the almost the knuckle, so it was a pretty deep cut. <laughs> Turns out these babies here are still really sharp. Anyways, when I tried to put the leg together, and I mentioned the earlier that the, uh, the gentleman who manufactures the 3D printed replacement parts I bought the knee grommets. It turns out these knee grommets don't work, which is a bummer because they're a little pricey. Uh, I emailed the designer and, and told him exactly what the problem was and my concerns with it. 
So hopefully he either remedies the design or or does nothing. I don't know. Who cares? It's, it's a moot point now. The piece is broken. It turns out that the diameter of the shaft here is too wide for the opening of the knee. So the diameter of the shaft is wider than the opening of this knee. So uh, when you try to close it and glue it, it definitely won't close. So being the engineer that I am, I'm just a civil engineer, by the way, so we're not super talented. I tried to um, take a file and shave. I took this small file here and tried to shave off some section so I could get it to fit. And I actually got it to fit. But when I tried to close this and clamp it shut, this piece snapped. Um, which is one of the downsides of 3D printed plastics. Sometimes they're not very strong depending on the how the print was. So this is scrapped. So I got I got mad and uh, took a break and thought about it for a bit. So then I decided to come and test out the elbow piece. So this is the elbow grommet that connects the bicep to the elbow. It actually, shockingly, works better than the actual grommet that I bought for the knee. So this actually works just fine. Um, the diameter is almost exactly, well, it's a little bit less than this, so it allows the leg to, to, to pivot and uh, turn. So I got on and ordered two more of these because I just bit the bullet, ate the cost. So these will be here this week. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the legs with these elbow pieces and show you what they look like. Um, of course, the hip area, this is the, again, like I mentioned, this is where I really got my thumb good trying to take this apart. There's a little bit of uh, section loss from taking it apart, which is fine. You're never going to see it. I'll glue it back together. It'll be just fine. Um, when you do something for the first time, obviously, you're going to have issues like that. It's called, uh, I always like to say, I think I misspoke earlier and said trial by error. It's actually trial and error, but actually trial by error is more accurate because uh, you make all these mistakes and uh, that's how you learn. So we'll go ahead and pause the video and uh, come back and hopefully I'll have a completed uh, bottom section for you. Welcome back, guys. So here it is. Here's a completed bottom half of my Super Joe. A um, couple things to note. I told you I used the elbow grommets, which actually work great. Now, this was the one that I tried the actual grommet on itself. So when I tried to press them together, it kind of marred the plastic opening a little bit. So this leg's a little loose. That's not going to be a problem. What I'll do is just take some uh, dental rubber bands like you put in braces and just wrap one several times in there to create a little tension in there but other than that you know this is the other leg here it works great so the torso is next but the the bottom half's done obviously the torso and the bottom half work in conjunction so uh, when I get ready to get the torso done, the last part will be to glue the uh, hip area together. And it will, uh, torso fits down in there. So, cool. But yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, you're going to have some trial and error with stuff like this. Um, especially when I've never done something like this before. So I think it's uh, I think it's important to mention that you know when you do screw up you need to tell people you screw up because you know nev nothing's ever perfect and uh, such is the case when you're doing something for the very first time. So uh, that being said, this is the bottom portion all finished, ready to go, and. Uh, Super Joe, I guess you consider to be, uh, I think, a third of the way done. So uh, when we come back, we'll uh, 
we'll start working on the arms. Um, that being the first thing, the hands. So I've got a, kind of a new battle plan for the hands and let's just hope it works out. Let's hope I don't cut a finger off or do something extreme, but who knows? Welcome back guys. So let's talk hands. As you know, I got a set of uh, Tonto hands from the Gabriel Long Ranger line. I think they're going to work well. Like I said, people like to use the Mego or uh, I believe the Mattel Real Ghostbusters hands. That's what I've seen commonly used on all this. Um, but I had these laying around and it was really down to these or a set of uh, big gym hands. And I didn't want Joe to have a permanent karate chop, so I went with these hands. I wanted to be able to grip something at some point in time. So, the deal with these hands are, they are uh, not set up, obviously, to go in the uh, arms for Super Joe. Uh, the arms for Super Joe, um, the openings are a little different, actually quite a bit different. So, what I did is I went ahead and cut this tab piece off here. As you can see, I've done it on the right hand. Now these, two, these arm pieces for Super Joe are just like the muscle body ones. They're universal. It doesn't matter whether they're right or left. Uh, they're the same hand. So, so I kind of trimmed it with a razor knife to get it to fit down in here. But what I actually am going to do is I'm going to measure up a little bit and cut, try to put this focused, cut the hand off around here cut that part off. Then I'm going to take a small drill and drill out a hole and use this eighth inch styrene rod and glue it up in there. And then I will melt the end like so. So when it slides in here, there's a nice little tab right here that will catch on that melted piece so the handle will stand there when I put them together. You'll see when I get it all done, I'm trying to explain it as best I can. But uh, I will do some trimming on this, drill a hole and mount this uh, styrene, glue this styrene tube up in here. And then that's how we're going to mount the hands in this Super Joe arm. So when we come back, I'll try to, well first I'm going to try not to screw this up. <laughs> but uh because I only have one set of hands. Um, so when we come back, I will have a completed hand, hopefully. Welcome back, guys. So here we go. I've actually drilled the hand. So what I did was I cut it off, like I said, enough to where I was comfortable with the hand being able to kind of turn and have a little bit of autonomy. I drilled a pilot hole in the center of this with a smaller drill bit and proceeded to drill it out slowly with an eighth inch drill bit. Now when you come back, you can take this styrene tubing and theoretically, not theoretically, you can work it in and there's your hand. So let me grab a set of pliers real quick and uh, I'll trim this off a little bit. So you can see what I was talking about. Obviously, I'm going to trim this off some more. Let me trim it off a little more. So. Sorry about that. So what I'll do is I'll melt the end of that. So it will catch on that lip. So then that's how we'll mount our hands. So. We'll have a nice set of hands. The, the skin tone matches up relatively well. Uh, so I'm not too upset about that. So when I come back, I'll try to have this melted so you can see what this looks like. All right, here we go. This is the hand. It's not been glued in place, but you can see it works nice. It's a little loose, but hey, man, when it's, when it's, glued, when it's glued shut, I think it'll be fine. So... Um, you can see what I did here. 
Just a nice little tab to keep it from coming out and I'll glue that portion in there. So the hand's done. So I won't waste my time doing the other hand on camera. You'll just know how I did them. Um, that's how I'm going to go about doing this. Obviously, if you're going to make do one of these Super Joes, you hopefully will come up with a better idea than I do, uh, which is always the case. I feel like I'm just this guy that comes up with an idea, then somebody just takes it and completely makes it way better. So, And I love that, and I'm glad people do that. So, um, That's my hand done, or, the, or almost done. So... That's wrapped up, and now all I have to do is wait for my Shapeways order to come in with the other two elbow grommets that I need, and then we will complete the torso and uh, wrap this Super Joe up. All right, guys, welcome back. So we're moving on to the arms now. By the way, my thumb is healing up rather nicely. Just got in an uh, order from Shapeways for a new set of grommets for the elbow. So I plan now on doing the arms and then assembling it with the torso. As you can see, here's the brand new grommets. A couple things of note. The old shoulder gears are fine. They're in good shape, but I bought replacement ones. The problem with these is, excuse me, that sounded pretty dumb. The problem with these are they create a little bit of friction in the shoulder. So when I put them together and try to use the, uh, the one-two punch mechanism, there's a lot of friction there. So I took some fine sanding paper and a little bit of oil and I uh, oiled this up so they actually work really well when I get this all assembled. I'll show it to you. This is a really simple spring mechanism. So the shoulder gear sits in here like so. You push it and this little spring operates the one-two punch mechanism. So pretty self-explanatory. got the hands ready to go. I had to put a little uh, craft masking tape on here to give this a little more bulk. It was a little loose in the socket, but um, the hands are ready to glue in. As you can see, it's not too bad of a difference between the Tonto flesh tone and the flesh tone of this G.I. Joe. I'm not too concerned about it. Once you get his jumpsuit on, it'll be fine. So. We come back, I'm going to go ahead and get the arms assembled and glued together, and then we'll talk about it a little more. <sighs> okay, welcome back. Well, I've got the arms glued, at least the forearms, and I'm working on the upper arms. We've hit a snag once again. Uh, the grommets are a little bit too small for the arms. What I mean by that is, I'll try to show you here with the right piece. So this is the left arm. If you put the grommet, sorry, let me get this on camera. If you put the grommet in. and you try to extend the elbow, the grommet doesn't have enough neck, so you, if you try to bend the elbow up, it'll snap the, it'll snap the head off, which I did with this one because this Shapeways plastic is garbage. And the more I'm starting to work with this and these, these pieces that I got off Shapeways, the more I'm starting to realize that the guy that designed it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna poo-poo him, but I, I know he probably designed it from um, probably not having the actual pieces in hand like these. Uh, he probably did his best, but he made a lot of errors. 
So I've tried to talk to him and send him some emails, but he's never responded. So um, whatever, man. I'm going to make it work one way or another. If I can't bend his elbows up, I won't. But I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to have to drill down through here and, and thread a, a screw through so I, you know, so these won't break off. I also know, will note that this plastic that's used, the 3D printed plastic, is extremely brittle. So if you drop this on a concrete floor, it snaps all these off. So I've already snapped the head off this. So I'm going to have to drill down and thread and put a really tiny screw in here as well. Uh, this is just really, um, this just pisses me off, to be honest with you. Because this, these parts were very expensive. And for them to be garbage like this, when I've invested so much time and effort into this project, it's very... It's very frustrating. So I'm going to come back, try to fix this as best I can, and, and assemble the arms. Welcome back, guys. So uh, I wasn't going to be deterred by this. So I, uh, I went ahead and glued some pieces back together, pinned them, screwed them. Um, I, I don't want to order any more parts. I don't want to give this guy any more money, and I don't want to give Shapeways any more money. So I'm just going to make it work. Um, right now the torso is gluing together. And uh, when I come back, I'll tell you what I did basically. But the leg connector snapped as well. Um, so I had to screw that. So hopefully that holds. I don't know. This plastic's so crappy. I don't even know how to describe this. I'm so angry right now. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to let my emotion get the best of me though. I'm just going to try to get this finished as best I can. And this guy is obviously just going to be displayed. So and he has his jumpsuit on. You're really not going to know. So I'll come back after we get the uh, torso and stuff glued together. And let it sit for a little while because there's a lot of tension in there due to the two springs that operate his one-two punch. So I'll be back in a bit. <sighs> okay, guys, here he is. Super Joe, all complete. Uh, like I told you a little bit ago, I just took the knee grommet that I had, the extra one that didn't break, filed it up and uses the elbow grommet so it works. So you can see here, like I mentioned, it's too tight. The elbow grommets, the ones that you order are too tight. So um, his one-two punch works. So that's cool. Um, Yeah, we'll get him all suited up and come back. So there he is, um, Super Joe. Sorry about that. Stand him up here. He's all complete. Man, what a pain in the butt. So um, I'll get him suited up here, and I'll come back with some final thoughts. All right, guys, here he is. Completed my 1977 Super Joe Commander. You win some and you lose some. I'm going to take the L on this project for a lot of reasons. I invested a lot of money in it. It was time-consuming. I injured myself, just to name a few things. When you start a restoration project like this, you kind of get an idea of what you want to do. And I did a lot of research heading into this. Checked out 3D Super Joes. Looked at a lot of different forums, Facebook pages. And I thought this would be a really fun project to do. It has been anything but. That being said, I do have a completed Super Joe now for my collection. I'm fine with him. 
He's essentially a glorified mannequin because I'm so scared to do anything with him outside of a really rigid range of motion that he's just going to stand somewhere and look like a mannequin. The pros and cons of doing this restoration, the pros are you have a Super Joe. So if you've always wanted one for your collection, by all means, try something like this. Put the time and the effort in. Learn from my mistakes. The cons. There's a lot. Um, first and foremost, the shapeways and the designer of the pieces. I give both of them an F. The designer, I won't fault him too much because I don't really know how many of these kits people have bought but they're but they're very expensive so you're talking like nine bucks a pop for joints so you do one two three four five six seven eight you know you could get into some serious money on a project like this and these super joes they're just going up in value right now because everybody's buying them so that's one con is that it's very expensive and the products are not worth the money. Uh, the plastic that Shapeways manufactures these with are terrible. They're brittle. Uh, the 3D printed pieces are just they're garbage. The designer's pieces don't fit the way they should. He needs to do some work to those. I would like to think as an engineer myself that he made, that he actually did these and tested them out before he put them on his site, but I don't know. I've emailed him. I, I haven't heard back from him. I don't know if I ever will, but I'm over it. Another con is it's very difficult. I thought that being able to do a muscle body would be able to transition over to this, but not really. This is a very difficult body to take apart, and it's it's just a, it's just a level of difficulty that I wasn't ready for probably, and to add. To that was, you know, the substandard parts and all the bad luck I really had with this project. So, um, another con is it's just not a very well-designed figure. Hasbro really mucked this whole design of this figure up, so it's kind of hard to do. Um, final thoughts. I would like to see, like, uh, Toy Poloi or Tinker Toy Tim do a... Uh, restoration of this figure because those guys are really really good at these videos and I think they could do a better job than I did <clears throat> I'm sorry I did uh, when I completed this I, I almost thought about deleting it all and not even posting it but then I thought to myself that this is real um, people have bad luck with restorations and I think you need to put that out there because not everything is perfectly done and edited and need and my videos definitely are not that so I wanted to see people have I wanted people to see like you guys out there see that I had a lot of problems with this um, some self imposed and others that were well out of my control so um yeah I'm throwing this video out and I hope you guys all enjoy it I mean, looking back, all I can do is laugh. I mean, I wasted some money and a lot of time, and I cut the heck out of my finger, and this just was a cursed project from the start. And I'm not, I'm not disappointed. I'm just, I'm a little beat down by it, but I'll rebound. I got a lot of other restorations coming up where I, I'm more confident. Uh, this, this was a tough thing, so um, that's about all I can say. Like and subscribe to the page, leave comments, share this video. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. It's March, and uh, we're marching through the year. So that's about all I got for you guys. I hope everybody's doing great out there. Cheers.